Like I said, I was a garbage man. I don't have a lot of uh, artifacts, because I wasn't keeping a scrapbook when I was a garbage man. But this is the actual ad that I answered to become a garbage man in 1980. And people always said, man, you must have made a lot of money as a garbage man. You noticed these salaries were at three to five bucks, which was, I think three was minimum wage at the time. It might have even been a little lower. And this is the truck I worked on uh, in 1960, whatever, when it was first purchased by the village. That's the mayor of my hometown throwing the ceremonial first bag of garbage in the back. And by the time I climbed on this thing, it was this rusting, belching, shaking, rattling, toxic waste heap. We called it Cyclops. And uh, Cyclops played a very, very important role in my life. That was me. This is me from the garbage truck era. I was uh, 6'3", like I am now, but I weighed 135 pounds. I was the world's skinniest garbage man. But after two years on the truck, I put on 30 pounds of muscle. As I tell people all the time, the garbage made a man out of me. <laughs> and this is actually the guys who were based on the Very Road Crew. It's the only bad photo I have. It's McGee, Mike, and me. Um, I fictionalized them up quite a bit, but you know the root there is is real. And, and like I said, I really like that because it, it gives you that base, that base of truth you can write from. Now this has this book has a long publication history. I started when I first started to think about God. I got out of newspapers. Um, I began doing short stories, and I started with trash stories, and I collected them uh, as a uh, uh, floppy in 2002 which another publisher put out, so my editor won't attack me as I talk about it. Um, and it, uh, it got me an Eisner nomination, which was a nice way to start. That's the the Oscars of comics. It's not very good. I mean, you can see the drawings really primitive and uh, uh, really cartoony. I don't know what the hell I was doing there. But people seemed to really like it, so uh, I periodically came back to it, mainly as a webcomic, just for fun between books and larger projects. And it was just a nice way to clean the palette. And also because, you know, when you do books, you've got like three years between books. I mean, it takes a long time to do a book. And I come from newspapers where you had something every week. So I was really used to that. I kind of missed that. So putting out a webcomic was a nice way, to, a nice way to do it. And at this point, this is when I moved it up to the present day, stopped being memoir, and I started fictionalizing. And the new book, which is all new, 250 pages, is a continuation sort of picks up where the webcomic left off. But it's self-contained. You don't have to read any of the previous stuff to get it. It's not like, you know, some of the mainstream superhero comics where you've got to read 70 issues before you can figure out what's going on. In addition to this uh, comic uh, narrative, I've got uh, what I, I guess you call fact pages, just examining this vast secret world of garbage and how much of it is out there. I mean, there are like 50,000 garbage trucks in the streets of America at any day. $55 billion a year is committed to garbage pickup. This is just the municipal garbage pickup. This doesn't count all the private stuff, you know, from stores and colleges. This is just what's put on the street. It's a staggering stream of garbage. It's this glacier of garbage. And we never see it or talk about it. But this kind of drives it home, I think. Each of us, makes five pounds of garbage a day, every day, seven days a week. That's after recycling. We recycle about 30% of our garbage. So this is what we send to the dump, and 95% of our garbage in America goes to a, a dump. So that's 35 pounds a week, 150 pounds a month, and over 1,800 pounds a year, 365 five-pound bags. But that's each of us, every man, woman, and child. So a family of four throws out 1,400 bags weighing over 7,000 pounds. And keep in mind, there's 323 million of us. It's an amazing amount of garbage. If you took the garbage that just Americans produce, filled garbage trucks with it, lined them up bumper to bumper, in just 18 months, that line would stretch all the way to the moon. And that's every 18 months, year after year after year. Oh, cool. 
So it's a big story, and um, it all winds up in the dump, as I said. I think every American should be forcibly taken at gunpoint to a garbage dump and forced to spend a day in the pit. And, you know, you kind of drive into these things, and when you get to the bottom of them, I mean, these are acres. They're 30, 40, sometimes hundreds of acres big now. There's 2,000 of them in the country. And it's like you're on a planet of trash. There's just walls and cliffs of garbage all around you. You jump out of the truck and you sink up to your knees. And the smell, the things you see there, it is really indescribable. It really you know, kind of drives it home. This is my dump, by the way. This is what this dump looks like today. It's closed. I think it closed like 10 years ago. And what was once a pit, like 50 feet, 100 feet deep, is now a hill like 150 feet high. And this thing covers probably 30 acres. So it's, I'm guessing, 300 feet deep. And all that's on top of it, here it is from the bottom looking up. All that's on top of it is like three, four feet of dirt. So underneath that is just garbage. It's a spooky place because they keep it mowed. And you can stretch this panoramic into the, the equal length in either direction. They keep it mowed. There are no animals, there are no birds. Because like wildlife's freaked out about it. I was there with my dog and he was spazzing out. <laughs> to give you a sense of scale, the, the uh, trees at the top of the horizon there, those are full-size trees. They're also fruit trees. Some smart ass planted an apple grow at the top of this dump. Which just kind of wreck, you know, that's like garbage man humor right there. Um, the evil queen from Snow White would love those apples because they are. And all over the hillside are these pipes that stick up that siphon off the methane because uh, garbage dumps produce methane gas for like uh, 50 years. And it's very explosive, so if they don't siphon it away, you'd have like a Krakatoa of trash that showered garbage on the neighboring communities. And there are houses all around these things. And there's 2,000 of these dumps in the country. And often you don't even know what they are. If you see an open field with like pipes sticking out of it, that's an old garbage dump. <laughs> this is one of my I'm very proud of this panel. Think of the economy as a giant digestive tract, and we're here at the rectum of the free market to clean it all up. That really kind of sums it up. The American dream, as Russell Baker said, is to turn goods into garbage as fast as possible. And it really is. You know, that's what it's about, just the churning economy. And, uh, you know, we buy stuff, it breaks immediately, we throw it away, we buy new stuff. We build a building, it, it ceases to... It crumbles after 10 years, we tear it down, we build a new one, that's how it goes. But there's a very real cost for that, and that cost is getting great. <clears throat> how am I doing for time here? I guess we're right about it. Do you want to wrap it up? Do I take questions now, or? You have no answers for me, do you? <laughs> do it at the end? All right, so let's just go with Richard. Uh, one so that's trash. Thanks.